Good morning, everybody. Um, oh, let me make sure my Wi-Fi on is so this. Oh, it is. Okay. Aaron Bailey. Hey, I need an update on how you doing with my book. Let me know. Coffee Conversa, uh, Creatory Vitamin Jai, Zebulon Crawford, uh, Asia Somebody, De Deidre, Eve Life, uh, Tiffany Montgomery, Timothy is hey, hey. My mama is in here. Renetta, uh, King's Kid, uh, Marquita, hey, hey. Deidre Cole, Pleasant Kid. Um, hey, Mom, good morning. Pastor Josh, Promise Tarver. Pastor Pat, I love you, man. What's up, bro? Brand, Prophet Keisha, you've been quiet over there. Where you been? I know. Rob Rush, I see you. Elder Moore, Navio Johnson. Um, Mona Lisa Brown, Lady Kurtz. Um, Jamie Stokes. Callie Girl, Victoria's Helen. Uh... Child, man, I can't see this. Deshaun, <laughs> um, frankly speaking, hey, hey, Cheryl from Miami, Diamond Sneed, Overseer Morris, I love you. I know, Ma, it's upstairs. Pastor Jason, I see you, Dardra, 888. Um, hey, my glasses are upstairs. I try to only wear them when I need them. Hey, listen, I got a little bit. Uh, I'm on my way to the gym. I wanted to um, talk to you guys before I went to the gym, which is very rare. Uh, I normally hit you up after I um, go to the gym. So while I'm waiting on my pre-workout to kick in, I'm going to share something with you. And uh, I hope that you guys are off to an amazing start. And I hope that something powerful is uh, being released to you today. So thank you so much for your prayers and thank you so much for all that, all of your support. We're over 32 million hearts here on Periscope. You guys did that. And thank you so much for all the encouragement and all of the um, emails concerning our new building. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. Uh, we won't be going in until July, but we are there every day doing work and overseeing contractors and getting stuff done. And I'm there with my people doing it with it because this is so important to me. So thank you so much. It means the world to me. It also means the world to me that so many of you are giving. You know, we bought the building outright, paid in full. And uh, we have been paying for everything that we need to do with cold hard cash. But people are still giving and people are still sending offerings and seeds. And that just means the world to me. And it, it has me paying attention to what God is doing. So I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Listen, I have a word for you. Um, in the scriptures, um, one of the things that is very intricate to, <laughs> it was deep, okay, we can talk about it soon, Bailey. You needed some depth, though, even if, yeah, I didn't agree with everything in it, but it was uh, a great book to create a paradigm. That was for Aaron Bailey. All right, here's my word for you. One of the biblical um, um, patterns that we see as it pertains to people, their names, uh, their futures and uh, where they're going and it's a very unusual thing to pay attention to but anybody that is a serious scriptural scholar and a serious student of the scripture will notice a pattern and that is in the Bible when God made promises to certain men and their lineages descendants futures their family lines he would often discuss those things in at or around the subject of a table uh, and tables in the Bible have a lot of scriptural weight. I mean, they were places of heritage. You were at a table because of who you belonged to, where you were born to. You were at a table uh, 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 based upon um, the event, the feast, the celebration. But another thing that your table determined was also your seat, where you were seated at a, seated at a table was significant. For example, the firstborn was seated somewhere. Uh, the baby was seated at another place. Uh, another thing that was determined by the table was, was a portion. Everybody did not get the same amount. For example, when uh, the prophet Samuel invited Saul to his table, he prepared a shoulder portion and the servants got the rest. He was giving him the meal of government. Uh, the Bible says that the government is upon his shoulders. And so in the Bible, shoulders with a portion of feasts that were uh, suited for kings. And so in your life story and in your life uh, drama, whatever you want to call it, an outplay, 
um, you will be invited to certain tables. Tables will be presented to you. Tables will be prepared to you. But what I find is that many of us often uh, don't discern the type of tables that we are brought to and we don't know how to behave at the tables. Um, now, I sense that this is a season for us to come to new tables. And for some of us, it may mean that we have to vacate old tables. I started to think about the prodigal this morning, okay? And everybody always thinks about the prodigal in terms of leaving his father's table and coming away from it. But I want you to know what the definition of a prodigal is. Um, the, def the definition of the word prodigal is to exhaust resources, money, or inheritance freely, wastefully, and recklessly. A prodigal or to be prodigal means to exhaust or overspend resources freely, recklessly, and wastefully. So we see one dynamic of a prodigal in that he was seated at a table and left. But I want to also suggest to you to refuse to come to an appointed table could also be the behavior of a prodigal. Just because you were not seated at a table uh, does not mean that you're not a prodigal. If you refuse to come to the one you're invited to, you are also a prodigal. So we see it in one line and in one dynamic and in one dimension in the scriptures where there was somebody who enjoyed heritage and portion and resource and acceptance and name and all of that good stuff and he chose to leave and uh, but we don't see it that it is also possible to have refused to have ever have joined because you prefer pigs when a person is a prodigal they only have one choice and that is to intermingle to engage with and to find family amongst swine that's right beloved pigs your option in this season and i want you to hear me prophetically your option in this siebel is either you come to the table or you play with pigs either you come to the table or you play with pigs now am i being insulting no not necessarily but i want to describe to you why that's so important pigs are indiscriminate they don't have a cultivated or directed appetite for anything. They are without direction. Their only concern is their appetite. The Bible talks about this type of people. When Paul says they worship their bellies, that means that they're only driven by what they are hungry for. They have no perspective for anything external to themselves, and then they refuse to live clean. Pigs actually find comfort in dirt, around dirt, around that that is germy, around that that is contaminating. They have no desire for cleanliness. And when you are not at the table of your destiny, of your next invitation, of your heritage and of your portion, you will probably find company amongst pigs. Why? Because what distinguishes you from the pigs is that you have a directed appetite and a disciplined desire that determines your decision making and determines what tables you are willing to sit at. And many of you right now, I uh, sense prophetically, are, are not at the table you're supposed to be at. Now, this could be a city. This could be a job. This could be relationship. This could be a career. This could be uh, uh, an area of engagement. And you are frustrated and you are irritated and you are angry because it seems that all your friends are pigs. All your teachers are pigs. Everything around you is pigs. It's not that they're not eating. It's just that they're eating everything. And for where you're going, your appetite, your diet is extremely specific to purpose. It's extremely tailored and customized to where God is calling you to go. So you can't really afford to have in your immediate engagement those who eat everything offered to them. You have got to be particular. You have got to be deliberate and you have got to be calculated about what you consume because it translated into who you develop into. How many of us are missing our portion because we're playing around with pigs? There is a table. Some of you, even and I'm just feeling this in my spirit, some of you need to go back to the to the church that you left now listen to me y'all know there is nobody who is an advocate of leaving dead or dying churches in myself i won't go into that because it offends quite a few people and that's not my objective necessarily this morning so i'm not talking about those of you that are in cults those of you that are in 
uh, 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 cemeteries, those of you that are in museums and monasteries, places where God used to be and he's not there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about places where you left because you were offended, places where you left because you didn't get a position, but you were being fed well. You were being fed well. And not only were you being fed well, you were being fed according to your future. And you left, and you left rebelliously. I believe this might be the season for you to go home. Humble yourself. Get over yourself. Forget the offense. And go back to your father's table. Because you're praising with pigs. Shouting with pigs. Confided in pigs. Nothing to offer. No specific diet. What good is a diet that is not specific? That, you know, the, the very nature of a diet is that it is specific. If you have a diet that's random and arbitrary, and some of you are in places where there is no real cultivated food source, you have no real portion, and there is a portion for you, you need to find the table you were called to be at. Don't just go roaming around parks. The Bible has a word for you. It's called vagabond. For those of you that leave places without insight into the next place you're supposed to go, it's called a wandering and a roaming place. I am burdened this morning about those of you that have hearts that are on the roam. You're just roaming in your heart, looking for a place to find safety. And you think that just because you have a spiritual post-traumatic stress syndrome, that you get to behave as if you were not initially seated at a table. So now, because you want the mental relaxation and you want the vacation of the soul, you refuse to pull up your chair and behave as if you belong where you belong because you actually got comfortable with the pigs. But here is the risk that you are running. You are running. Running, missing the opportunity for the next table. Consider Psalms 23. He prepares, he prepareth a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. The risk you run if you don't go to the table God called you to go to is that your enemies will not be able to observe you in victory. They'll actually observe you in defeat. And I want you to hear that as a warning from the Lord. They will observe you in defeat. They will observe you in weakness. They will not observe you and see the glory of God, the dealings of God, the trophies of God. They will observe you and their cry over you will be, I told you so. If you want to have proper engagement and proper posture towards the enemies that you've been assigned, I'll get there uh, Sunday. But to the enemies that have been assigned to you, the best war move you could get is get at your table. Some of you are in houses and you refuse to act like you have a portion. You are in houses and you are watching strangers and aliens and foreigners get the portion that was allotted to you because you're rejected. You're abandoned. You're watching people that just got there get more of the heritage that you actually have because you won't humble your heart and you won't pull up a seat and you won't behave as if you belong. Get over yourself. Get some mental breakthrough and find your chair and pull it up. This is a moment of tables. Um, finally, my brother in the Bible says that when the prodigal son came to himself, some of you were at the table and left. Many of you won't, don't even have the courage to come. It's not that you're at the table. You've lived with pigs and now you've been invited to a table and you refuse to accept the invitation and do what you need to do to get there. I believe this is a moment for unprecedented sobriety. You have got to come to yourself. You've got to come to yourself. If you don't come to a great level of sobriety, you're going to miss your portion. You're going to miss your portion. I am concerned about so many gifted, talented, anointed, smart people that are missing their portion, either because they don't have the courage to take a seat where God is inviting them, or because they don't have the humility to return to where they left. If you dismissed yourself from a table because you didn't like what was being served and what was being served was actually contributing to your soul's success, repent, humble yourself and go home. Even the servants in your father's house have more peace than you while you're playing with the beasts of the field. Humble yourself, go home. Now, for those of you that never had a home, you have lived all your life with pigs and all of a sudden desires have started to stir in you that weren't there. Hunger has started to stir in you and it was not there. A cry for a future that you've not known and nobody's ever invited you to a table. This is a place for you too. 
David gave Mephibosheth a place at a table that he never had. So there's one level of a prodigal who dismissed himself from a table. And there's another form of a prodigal who refused to come. If that city is not your city, if that career is not your career, if that church is not your church, if that leader is not that leader, if that degree is not your, come to the table that God is calling you to. Make haste and don't tarry. Because what you're missing out on is your portion while you're doing what you need to do to keep company. At one point in your life, you're going to sacrifice the applause and the comprehension of your company. Some of you need to have new friend tryout. You need to have BFF tryouts because some of you are bound by the necessity of acceptance and company and you won't make a bold, courageous move to go to the table of God he is calling you to. So hear the word of the Lord. This is a season of tables. Tables are being opened to you. Tables are, are being turned and tables are being positioned. And it's going to determine where you're seated. It's going to determine where you eat. It's going to determine the portion that God has assigned. Every person has a portion. And if you're going to progress in this season, you've got to go where your portion is. It is not your portion to play with pigs. Because you can't be fooling with swine and be successful in your soul. So some of you need to go back to your tables, humble yourself. And some of you need to go, come to the invitation you've been accepted to the table that God has prepared for you and uh, have yourself there. I hope this blessed you, but this is a moment of, of prophetic tables. Maybe you are Saul at a table. Maybe you are Mephibosheth at a table. Maybe you are the prodigal at a table. Maybe you are David at Psalms 23's table. But there are behaviors for tables. And there are table manners and ways that you need to behave when God is dismissing you from and calling you to one. Or when God is giving you the opportunity to come to one you've never had. This is a moment where you need to sober yourself, find your table, and take a seat. I bid you peace in the name of Jesus. I think I feel my pre-workout coming in. And this is back day. Pray for me tomorrow is leg day. But uh, today is back day. It's my favorite day at the gym. So hear this as the word of the Lord and apply it to you. Come to the table uh, because there is a place that you belong. You don't belong everywhere, but you do belong somewhere. But it's time for you to stop partying with pigs and get it done. I love you. I hope that this blessed you. And uh, I will see you very, 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 very soon. Till then, I bid you peace. Have a great day.